And that increases uh, the morbidity for the patient, increases risks of, of infection and pain and things like that. So we do things percutaneously, so it's a very small incision. And the way we do this is we use a device that stitches the artery from the inside out, basically. Um, um, hey, Matt, do you have a per-close? Can you just hand it to me real quick? Sorry. So this is, a, this is what's called a per-close, ProGlide. It's actually an Abbott product. And uh, this is a suture-mediated closure system. This was intended, uh, originally designed to close, um, just use one device to close a hole up to eight French or so. But now we can use actually multiple devices to close larger holes. So we typically will use two of these, and I'll walk you through how we do that, uh, to close a larger hole. Um, so that's how we do it. Um, let me give this back to you. Thanks. So what we've done so far, so the patient is going to have two access sites. One site is for the actual valve de delivery system to go through. And the other side is going to have two things. One, an arterial access so that we can put a catheter up to inject dye and, and, uh, and give us visualization of what we're doing. And the other access is going to be the vein so that we can put a temporary pacemaker. Because when we deploy the valve, we're actually going to temporarily pace the heart very quickly. And the reason why we pace the heart quickly is just like any pump, if a pump goes very, very fast, it cavitates and it doesn't circulate fluid. We want that to happen because if the, if the heart is pumping too strongly, it's pushing blood out through the valve, the valve can migrate like a champagne cork. So we want to actually overdrive pace the heart so it cavitates, reduces the amount of flow across the valve so we can get the valve in position. So that's what the purpose of the temporary pacemaker is. So for this patient, um, Ray has already gotten access on the non taver side, meaning the non-valve uh, delivery side. So there's one little small six French sheath in the artery and one a six French sheath, sheath in the vein. And this little white thing here is the temporary pacemaker wire. So again, different sites and different operators do things differently, but we'll kind of show you how we do things here at Scripps. What we do is get the non-taver access site first, and then we're going to use a, 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 a simple crossover catheter. This is called a rim, if you can zoom in on that. It's just a little hook, kind of looks like an umbrella. And we're going to use this to go in from the left side hook the other side, and then go around into the other side and directly visualize the artery, and we're going to stick the artery under direct visualization. Some people like to use ultrasound. The problem we have with ultrasound is that it's very hard to get a precise stick in the anterior, right in the center of the anterior wall of the artery, and the device I showed you a few minutes ago, the per-close, is designed to, be, to work when the access site is exactly in the center of the artery and an entry angle of 45 degrees. So if you end up with a sidewall puncture or the angle is too shallow or too steep, the device may fail, and then obviously that's a problem for the patient. We can have bleeding issues or have to have uh, you know, surgical repair or something like that. So we'd like to do this under direct visualization um, for that exact reason. So we'll kind of walk you through that. So you ready, Ray? Okay, so we're just going to insert the rim catheter here from the left side. Go ahead with your wire. Hopefully you guys have fluoro. Can you guys see the fluoro image? Jen, if, I don't know if you can see the fluoro image. Yeah, we can. Okay, great. Okay, great. So we're just coming up from this side with a catheter. Pull back on the wire. That's the rim catheter. I'm going to kind of rotate it around to hook the other side. Go a little higher up there. There we go. Rotate it. See if we can get the other side to hook. I might have to do it from up here. Is this a stiff angle glide? Feels like it is. Uh, can we get a regular angle glide? That's what we usually use. I'm not sure why it's a stiff one. Too stiff, guys. All right, so we, this is wires a bit stiff. So let's get this the, the easier one. Take this out. So we use a, basically a, a, a glide wire, which is a hydrophilically coated wire that has a pre-made 45 degree bend on it and the body of the wire is fairly soft so that we can manipulate it bless you <laughs> and we're going to use we're going to do this to hook the other side should be right around here looks like there's some calcium there too isn't there there it goes so it's pretty high up actually so we have to go a little higher <coughs> get this to hook there we go mm, sitting again the plaque here come on there we go that's much better no nope, that's not it's a little higher up there's some calcified plaque here so it's making our lives a little bit miserable there we go that's looking better. There it is. Okay. Just took a while. There's a plaque sitting right there. So I'm going to pass this wire down 
And then let me get this torquer here. Can you just get, yeah, thanks, thanks, okay. So I want my wire to go down in the common femoral like that, and then we're gonna put that down into the superficial femoral. You don't have to follow it down, it's okay. Uh, just come back down to the, to the, yeah, there. And now I'm gonna advance my catheter, hopefully, around the horn like that, and bring it down. Okay, so now we have the catheter up and over from the other side. Take that wire, please, Matt, thanks. And now we're gonna hook this to our, uh, our manifold so we can give a little tiny squirt of contrast, not a lot, just a little bit, so we can kind of see where we are. All right, so what we want to visualize is our location, ideal location of access. So give me a tiny puff there, Ray. Just don't pull on that, there we go. So if you notice here, I'm actually, let's just do a cine here, just to show them for purposes of interest, there. So you see there's a bifurcation down there. I'm gonna let that play, so there's a split. That split is the, is the bifurcation or the split off between the profunda femoris and the superficial femoral. We don't want to access either of those two vessels, okay? Because A, they're smaller, and B, they're typically in a location which is too uh, distal for compression. So if there was a bleeding problem, we wouldn't be able to compress it. So what we want to do is we want to access the common femoral. And we want to access that over the bony landmarks. So I'm going to put my finger here. This is the exact spot I want to go in. So what I'm going to do is move my table, and I'm going to mark this area on the skin with a, with a felt pen, so I kind of know where I'm going. And that's the area I'm going to numb up. So I'm going to give some local anesthetic. This is lidocaine, very similar to what your dentist uses when you get your teeth worked on. So I'm going to numb this area so that the patient is more comfortable. And because we're putting a larger sheath in here, we're going to make a little skin incision and we're going to actually kind of stretch the skin tract a little bit to make sure that we can get our, our device in without difficulty. Okay. So I'm going to use a little blade here, just make a tiny incision. Just feel in the artery, there it is, right there. It's a pretty small incision, about a quarter of an inch wide. Then I'm going to take some Kelly clamps here, kind of stretch the tract like that. And then I'm going to get the access needle. Matthew, can I have the access needle? Thank you. Perfect. All right. So we're just going to take a simple 18 gauge needle, put our camera, put our table underneath the x-ray camera. I'm going to go into the tissue tract and then Ray's going to give me a tiny puff right there. So see, I want to make sure I'm right on top of that artery, right there. Okay. And I'm in and I got good flow and I'm going to pass my wire. Okay. So now we're in and now you can take that rim catheter out. Yeah. Go ahead and get 5,000 of heparin, please. Thank you. So now I'm just going to put my six French sheath in. So I know we're in a, in a proper location because we've directly visualized it. All right. So the next step is, sorry about the blood here. The next step here is we're going to use the perclose device to deploy those suture, uh, the two sutures in the artery, and those are going to be deployed now, and the reason they're going to be deployed now is because we're going to stretch the hole that we just made in the artery to a much larger size. And if we try to deploy those later, there, it's not the, 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 the needles that come through the device are not wide enough to grab enough tissue. And so we want to put those in now. It's what we call pre-close. So we're going to pre-close this. So I'm going to put a wire in here. Do you have a, there we go. I'm going to put a wire in the sheath, walk the sheath out, hold a little bit of pressure. Ray's going to help me put the first device in. Perfect. And this just goes into the artery, and once I get to a certain depth, we're going to remove the wire. I'm going to push this in until I get flow coming out of this little marker port on the side. That tells me I'm in the artery. Pull it back. There's no flow. Go back in. Rotate it slightly away from me. Open the foot plate. Pull it back and deploy it. And what that does is it puts a suture through the artery, and it has a pre-tied knot on it, kind of like a little bit of a, um, like a noose. And that's going to be attached to the artery. I'm going to pull the slack out of it, and that suture is going to stay there so that when we take the sheath out at the end of the case, we kind of use that to cinch down on the artery. Just hold that for me real quick. And then we use some stickers, just some uh, regular stickers here, to kind of keep these organized and keep them out of our way so they don't get confused and they don't get tangled up. Okay, so now we're going to, put a wire back through the device, which maintains access in the artery. We're going to walk this device out, put the second device in, and do a very similar thing. And I'm deploying these essentially at the 11 o'clock position uh, and the 1 o'clock position, kind of like an X. 
so that it gathers the artery back up when we're done. All right. So this is going to go in. Okay, wire out. Good. All right. So same thing. I'm going to go in until I get flow. No flow. Flow. Rotate towards me. Open the foot plate. Pull it back. Deploy it. Cut off the uh, handle here. And then bring the device back. Ray, can you hold that for me? And then harvest my suture and tape it out of the way or keep it organized. We're going to need the Amplatz wire. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Now we're going to put a stiffer wire through here. And this is the wire that we're going to use to actually get the valve delivery sheath through. All right. Let's see if I can. Oh, sometimes this gets stuck in the per close. Let go for a second. Yeah. See, sometimes the per close, the Amplatz wire won't go directly through the per close because of the hemostatic valve. Another fine Abbott vascular product. Okay, <laughs> can I have take this out? Can I have a regular J, please? So the stiff wire sometimes will not come through the device because of the way it's designed. I'm not sure why, but it gets stuck. Never figured that one out. It happens about one in a hundred. Okay. Especially when we're live. Always. Can we walk this out? And then what we're going to do, Matthew, is just give me this, the, sh the small dilator, uh, the gray one right there, and we're going to do the wire swap through that, okay? Okay, so we're going to put a, um, a little dilator in here to kind of stretch out the artery a little bit more. Okay, now I'll have the amplats, please. So we're going to put our stiffer wire through here, which goes no problem. Okay, so Ray, let's back this yep. out, and then we'll take the E-sheath. Now, for those of you in the audience that are engineers, you know that the E-sheath is uh, fortunately going to go away. And we're going to have the, uh, the ultra delivery system. I'm very excited about this because I'm, I got to be honest, I'm not a fan of the E-sheath. Um, my understanding is that uh, the person who designed it is uh, now working for Medtronic. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's a uh, less than ideal design. So we're going to have the Edwards up. And then we're going to insert this nice and slowly. We're going to watch it go up under x-ray and make sure that we don't have any problems. There we go. It's going pretty nicely. You can see this patient has a fair amount of calcium in their aorta. Okay, so the sheath is in. We're going to back the out our dilator, and then we're going to flush the sheath because we want to make sure there's no blood clots or anything. And then we're going to suture it in because the sheath is designed to be inserted um, you know, easily, and so therefore it has a hydrophilic coating, and it's a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing to get it in, but it's a curse later because when we go to advance the valve, the sheath tends to back out because it's so slippery. So we like to suture it in so that we don't have to have to have that problem. So I'm just going to suture it in, and then uh, and then that is that completes access. And uh, Dr. Tierstein is here now, and so he will tell you a little bit more about his patient. Um, Thank you. But uh, any questions about the access portion before I step out? Okay, well, let me just suture this in. Oh, there's one question. Okay, go ahead. Um, regarding the clock, you mentioned it was uh, 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock. Yes. The yes. I, is that your standard practice, or, or is it, does that vary from patient to patient? Is that always 11 and 1? That, 11 that, one? That's typically what I do, and, and you'll see that other operators do things differently. Some people like to just deploy both of them at, at 12 o'clock. Um, the, the issue is that if you, if, you don't, if you deploy them both at 12 o'clock, sometimes you'll get an incomplete closure. Um, there's some people that do one device first, and then at the end, they do a partial closure with that and then try to put a second device in at 12 o'clock. Th there are various ways of doing it, and the answer is whatever works for you. If you get good success and no complications, I'm not going to argue about it. For us, this works well. We've done it for 12 years or so now, and it, and it just works very well for us. You don't want to go more than one and at 1 o'clock and 11 because if you turn it too much, can I have one of those? Do you th throw the per closes away? Shoot. Okay, I was going to show you that there's a foot plate on it, and if you go too far, the foot plate, if the artery is small, the foot plate is actually wider than the artery, and you can rip the artery. So um, you don't want to go more than about 1 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Um, but, but the crisscross does help, and um, when at the end of the case, when, when they're done deploying the valve, when we take the sheath out, instead of just pulling the sheath out, we put the dilator back in. And the reason for that, can I have the dilator real quick, Matt? I just want to show them this. The reason we put the dilator in is two things, for two reasons. Number one, this, di this starts small and, and, and goes larger. What we do is by putting this back in the sheath, when we're removing the sheath, 
we're actually kind of cinching down on the suture slowly, and this is like a reverse dilator. So it starts big, and it allows it to gather up uniformly as it comes out. If you just pull the sheath out and go down on the sutures, sometimes you'll get puckering of the artery, and you'll have little tiny holes in it, and it'll leak from there. So it's more of a technique thing, and, and, and so we'll do it that way. And we also put the dilator in for another reason, because the E-sheath, unfortunately, occasionally, the, s the seam will actually be split wide open. And if, if you just pull the sheath back, it'll spray blood all over everybody, and then we get very upset. The dilator helps to reduce some of that spray um, when that happens. And that's more of an issue with tortuous vessels, and more of an issue with the 29, because there's more stretching of the sheath. So again, those, those issues, or at least that issue, will be gone when we get ultra, and we're not dealing with the E-sheath anymore. So, OK? All right, okay. thanks. Okay, I'm going to turn over to right, Dr. Thanks. Uh, do you have, is my mic up? Okay, you can hear me? Hi. Uh, is that Jen? Uh, all right, so um, thanks, Curtis. Yep. We've called uh, for a heart surgeon. I saw you guys were looking at the NCD uh, document. So uh, we, we're, we're waiting for our heart surgeon, and we're going to, meantime, we're going to do the next steps. Uh, do you want to, Ray, do you want to do it? And I'll just, uh, oh, I'll just, sure. not, yeah, uh, so um, Ray uh, is a, uh, but good question is how do we get trained for all this? Uh, Ray is a second year fellow, and that means that he, floor there, and okay, when, when, okay, you got good. Uh, you did, you in? Yep. Uh, question is can I talk and, and chew gum at the same time? Yeah, I can, I'm good. All right, um, so Ray is, uh, Ray is spending, he spends a second year uh, and uh, learning how to do structural, which is, I would say, probably what, 70% uh, valve yeah, or so? About, yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah. Um, so we, uh, we do a lot of TAVRs. Uh, our program is getting, Jen's going to get those numbers for me, but it's close to 400 a year, and he's going to get a lot of, so he gets a lot of uh, experience, and then he can go run a TAVR program. Um, so what we're doing now is getting ready to uh, to, to, we're getting ready to deploy the valve. So the first thing we're going to do here, let me, let me just push this. Where's the little gadget here? Uh, we're going to put a pigtail catheter in the aorta, and then we're going to. I'm just going to make sure there's no bubbles here while I talk. And uh, okay, good. And we'll go to our uh, go to the angles that the CT scan has given us. Uh, we want to have all of the sinuses aligned. All right, so you can see the, how the how's the image, uh, Jen? Can you see this? Okay, don't you? Yes, okay, good. So, so um, let's just give. I'm going to just do an injection here. Okay, so what we see here is the CT wasn't bad, but you can see that there's three sinuses, and the one that the pigtail is in is in the middle, and that is uh, a little higher. So it's really not perfect. So we have to go a little. You have to follow the middle one. Uh, Actually, so we're going to go cranial a little bit here, okay? The middle, middle one is the right coronary, although it's in the middle. We should call it the middle. Yeah. <laughs> I think I just did it what I needed to do. Creatinine was what here? It's normal. Normal, okay. So as I inject dye, my instinct is to ask what the creatinine is just to make sure uh, that I'm not going to. So it's all, I did a better job there. Is it better or you want to go further? It's pretty good. Maybe a little further. I think a little more. And then uh, this is probably going to be perfect. Okay, and now we've got a nice cope. Now we've got three little uh, scallops there, right? So that's the sinuses. And uh, you can see the coronaries coming out there as well that are important. And um, so you could argue that you could go a little more AP here too, right? Because the right is a little bit, but I think we're probably good enough. Uh, maybe I'll do a little bit because I'm just, all right, that's good. All right, so now let's, the next step is to be, is to cross the valve. now. This, this frustrates a lot of people when they're learning and then frustrates a lot of people after they've learned too. Uh, we probably could use some technology here to get us across the valve faster and more reliably. So the, the blood is going across the valve in the other direction, right? We, we're going to cross retrograde, meaning we're going to cross backwards. And, um, and I've got a straight wire here. And basically Ray's job is to try to fiddle with the catheter enough to, to aim for the small channel. Uh, you can see the calcium around the uh, pigtail catheter, right? That's the valve, and he's got to get this wire through. And you see he's probably a little bit too high there. Now he's probably too low, and now he's in the middle, and we're supposed to go right through there, but it doesn't. So he's, he's you know, we, this valve area is 0.7. This is a patient who's got two problems. This patient's got a, 
a, a tight aortic valve because he's 87, and this is how Mother Nature wants to repopulate the earth. Uh, and the other is he's got bad lung, lungs. Um, yeah, he's on hold one too, actually. Yeah, so how are we doing with the anesthesia? It's a good question. How's our anesthesiologist? Usually I say hello by this time. Hi. Any, uh, we're in the LMA, we're not, we're, are we intubated? LMA, okay. So, so this is, this patient's not intubated. We'd be nice not to intubate a patient who's on home mode too, because it's hard to extubate him. So that's one of the advantages of this procedure. And you can see how that Ray's having, you know, it's, uh, and after a while, he'll give it to me to do. And then I won't be any better than him, it's just that he gets tired, his hands get tired, his brain gets tired. And, um, and I, sometimes I'll give it back to him. And when we finally, we've never not crossed. But there's been times that it's taken 10, 20 minutes. And some, you know, patients who have uh, prosthetic valve disease, it can be harder to cross. All right, so now he's going to give it to me, not that I'm any better. Wouldn't it be cool if I got right through right now? <laughs> and we could use different catheters. Uh, we could use to do this. Uh, I'm kind of marching this wire around it. That's too low. Um, but we can also look, let's look for a snot wire, a terumo wire. They're very, just, just have one around. And um, as you can see, I'm not doing any, any I'm, not make, I'm not any better than, than, than Ray here. So then we'll take, we'll take a different catheter, a different shape catheter, which may put us in a different position. And it's just frustrating sometimes, it just takes, takes time. It's a really calcified valve too. Yeah, but it's not that super tight, I mean it's, I'm just moving the pigtail away just to help my visualization and I don't know, it just seems like the right thing to do. Yep. Uh, so sometimes you can get a sense of where it is by the jet by looking to see if it, the wire gets pushed. I'm not seeing it get pushed anywhere here. So where's that jet? Let's see. This is interesting. Huh? It's somewhere around here. So. So I'm just two schools of thought here. One is to do, do it quickly so you can get lots of, lots of at-bats, so to speak, and the other is to do it kind of thought, thoughtfully. So now I went from thoughtful to, all right, we're gonna, let's just start with this, let's get a snot wire in case it's that tight, and then we'll, um, and then we'll try a JR next. So you have a Terumo, straight Terumo wire? Yeah, this could be very boring. <laughs> Uh, right. I'm bored right. right now. <laughs> uh, let's see, yeah, right she, here. See, see, I see the jet there. You see that? Yeah. I think that's that's the jet. Yep. Uh, but I don't know that that's really helping us. It's so far away from the. So either this is just too tight and won't go. The wire won't go through. So that's I'm, I'm going to try the snot wire first. It's just a very lubricious wire. We call it a snot wire. It's not its technical name, uh, but that's what we call it. Um, I'm going to try that, and then we'll try JR, and I don't know what we'll do if we can't do that. We'll, all right, let's go, you got the snot wire? It's coming? Okay. All right, so I'll just keep trying while they... I'm surprised this is not going in yet. Well, her calcium score is uh, 3,200. Yeah, that's pretty high. Ingredients, 65. She, I mean, she's, she's got pretty bad aortic stenosis. So you see it. So and if there are any engineers out there? So someone had an idea once to use Doppler mm -hmm. to find this, to find the jet better, you know? But we could use some ideas here. This is a, is a pain point in the procedure. Not usually this much pain. But how are we doing with the, with the Terumo? We're chasing it out. Okay, so if, we, if it's gonna take you time to get that, let's do this. Let's um, uh, take this out. Yeah, you know what, this is long enough, right? Yeah, yeah. so I'll just leave it here and be yeah. careful with it. Okay, we'll just keep it here and be careful with it. Yeah. JR4 diagnostic, you can take that out? Okay. You have it or not? They don't have it yet? Wait, 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 wait. They don't, they don't have it, let me keep trying. You have it? Okay, good. That's the wire. We'll try the wire. That, that's what I wanted next. So just put some, some fluid in that wire and we'll give it a try. This is annoying. Just, you ready? Yep. Okay. That should go right through. Okay, so this one is a very, is, this wire is a kind of uh, a, a very lubricious wire, so it's hard for me to hold. 
and as you can see, I right, will get. Uh, I may need some, some gauze on this. So and, me, and you guys are getting the, the uh, see this one's yeah. a little harder to see. Do you, do you notice that? You might even yeah. not see it as well because it's. So it'll make it even more boring. <laughs> okay, good. You can get, get you can. You got the J four on the table. Yeah. Wow, this is really this is not easy, guys. Oh come on. You can curse at it too. Oh, this is really frustrating. See the other ones we've we've tried multi-purpose, yeah. we've tried Lima's. I'm trying to think of what's gonna be next. Maybe I'm oh. Has anybody seen any any of our so at this point I often go to our clinical specialists and sales guys and say, Hey, what have you guys seen? Because you guys get to see a lot of these. Yeah. What are you seeing when people can't get through that works? Yeah, like like you're doing changing catheters. But what catheter no, besides AM2. AM2. AM2? This is the AL yeah, we got. Yeah, this one's not that hard. So I don't. Yeah, this one shouldn't be that hard, actually. Maybe I'm just really bad this morning. I mean, I just can't seem to find the hole here. That, sh that should really do it, right? Right about there. And that's where we usually see it, right there. All right, let's get the uh, the, the JR. Yeah. So we need a wire. Let's just put a wire in here. We can. You got a stained wire or something like that. Sorry guys, I don't mean to be boring y'all. No, it's not boring, it's just good to see it. It's not always It's just a little bit of a struggle. Okay, you can take this. Can you take that out? Yep. I'm listening, yeah? So I was gonna ask who do we have in the audience? Jen, does she who do you have in the audience? Yeah. Um raise your hand if you're an engineer. Oh, so a lot of engineers. All right, can anybody think of a so That's can any great. engineers think of a good way to cross the valve? <laughs> uh, I mean, seriously, some technology. Yeah. I, I mentioned Doppler. Um, I guess. Uh, what Dr. Kirsten, what's your cutoff for uh, doing a BAV now? What, what, what kind of, do you ever do that now? A BAV? Or, oh, no, yeah. A previous, yeah. Previous well, if it's hot. Yeah, so we probably straight first yeah I, th I think the BAV when they when the valve area gets down to you know the 0.6 area and also if it feels hard to get through so this might be something to think about because we're having trouble getting the wire through maybe we'll have trouble getting the, the delivery system through gosh I'm really str struggling here Very, very, this is seemingly worse, right? Know, yeah. yeah. So multi-purpose is probably going to be worse, too. Yeah, multi-purpose probably going to be worse. Try the AL2. All right, we can get an AL2 yeah, out. I don't see. care. But I, I just feels, this feels, that. this feels like it's going to the wrong. It also feels like it's being, it's not, I, I can't get to the, to the left side mm -hmm. much with this thing. But it's different. So we'll try an AL2. <coughs> I mean, there is a channel here, so I should be able to find it, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you see the, why, how this catheter is shaped differently, which gets me do different things, but it's just not letting me do what I want to do here. Okay. It's just not getting me across. Uh, so you got the AL2? Yep. Yeah. This is not good at all. Okay. You want, you want to? Yep. Walk it out. Just be careful with that stiff wire. Right? Yeah, that's good. Uh, you don't want to go into the coronary. That's the key. Okay, good. I've got it out. We'll put the jail. This is going to be a bigger catheter. Three-way stop cock. Hmm. So, yeah. um, anything else to, to talk about? With uh, sure. That would be fine. We could also show, um, I'm kind of in the... Okay. Or no, go ahead, Jen. Yeah, you could talk you about... You do a little bit of that, and I guess yeah. also uh, we can also show you how to... Did you guys do a load yet? Have you seen the, them load, uh, load the valve? Or 
Are we, were we going to show yeah, that? Yeah, I can show. I can, yeah, I can show over here. So, so once you guys do that, I'm, I'm gonna, just going to play with this. But and then yeah. once you load the valve, how much time do we have to deploy it? Well, I won't fully crimp it. I'll just kind of go through okay, how we're going. So, so we're going to. So Steve, we'll go to the back table now because I'm yep. so boring. So here's the. We have the valve now. What I did, uh, and you guys off camera, we had a a crimp stopper here that was on here. And I had the valve uh, inserted inside this qual crimp, or it's just a foam uh, cover device that helps protect I the valve so, as it goes, uh, so as it gets uh, crimped. So I had that. I just placed the valve here right on the tip so. of the catheter. And then I crimped uh, all the way down over the valve uh, until it hit this catheter. green uh, crimp stopper. And so that's the, that was the first crimp. And then what we'll do is we take this piece off and then that'll allow us to go down to the final. When we're, when we're ready and he's crossed the valve and we're ready to put it in, that'll allow us to go down to the final, the final crimp. And we always, um, for a transfemoral case, obviously we want the skirt to be towards the tip of the catheter because this, this skirt part of the valve will be in the ventricle. Um, obviously uh, having the valve on the wrong direction would be a very bad thing. So we always have two people uh, confirm uh, orientation <sighs> so that uh, there's no mistake there and what we're going to do now too is uh, uh, prep a 20 by 4 balloon just in case they have uh, if it is truly um, that tight and it doesn't feel feels too tight we don't want to be able to so not cross with the valve so we want to have uh, we want to create a nice channel with the balloon so that we can uh, cross with the valve um, later so I'll just prep that balloon real quick <sighs> And this is the balloon that comes in our kit, the Edwards kit. Um, we have uh, four oh, different sizes, there. just like the valve. So this is a yeah. 20 millimeter. We're using a 23 valve, so we usually use a Ooh, little bit smaller, uh, oh, smaller I we balloon. <laughs> I thought we yeah. were. No. All right. Same thing. I'll just use a mix of contrast to fill up our inflation yeah. device. I'm still still working away here now. I'm getting right. I'm getting the this is a different kind of uh wow. This is hard. Oh come on. I think that's it. Look how tight that is. Wow. That's just very tight. Wow, yeah. So I don't that, they're through, yeah. So that's not quite in far enough to track yeah, it. So I'm straightening it out, trying to get the wire in a little further. Now I've got the wire in. Now it's slicing down that valve. So, I'll, so the J, this was an a Lima, right? Oh, he's on it. That yeah. was a good idea. Whose idea was that? Oh, that was my yeah. idea. Oh. <laughs> yeah. will, it, will it track in is the question now. Oh, come on. Up, there we go. Woo, that was hard. Dense. All right, so give All me right. a J wire next. Actually, I had to think. That, I'm exhausted now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we're in there, and Dr. Foley's going to take it out carefully. Don't lose that wire. If you lose the wire, you lose your job. <laughs> You're out of the fellowship. <laughs> no pressure. All right. Okay. So the next thing we'll do is get a pigtail in there, get some pressures, and then we'll put a, uh, a small safari wire. So there's a place for the engineers, right? Because you know, do you guys know that this, this uh, safari wire apparently is winning in the, in the wire it's, it's apparently more, most popular wire, and that's made by Boston, I think. And the, the confit is Medtronic. So for some reason, the Safari is getting, is, well, you know something? I'm not sure the data of the data. That's what Boston tells me. It's a very popular wire. Yeah. And they're selling some absurd number of them. I forgot what it was. A hundred, it was like 100,000 of them a year or some silly, some crazy num number. And it's, it's, it's like a $100 million business, it's a wire. Um, so that's an easy one to try to figure out what the difference is and why doctors like that one better. All right, so the pigtail's in. The next thing we're going to do is look at it, get some pressure measurements. So you guys probably have read about how aortic stenosis works. And there's a pressure gradient across the valve, and we're going to show you that right now. You guys want to be AVX? Yeah, okay, maybe. Yeah. That's fine. It's fine. Okay. You guys have the time? It's going to take an extra three yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah, I have the time. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're, uh, you want to clean, yeah. clear this out? So, 
So we've got, you can see the red and the blue, the, the difference there, we're just, pro it's, the blue's flat line now because we're flushing it. Uh, the contrast makes the pressure measurements a little bit Let me just awkward. Pull negative here. Okay, enough of that. All right, so what you see there is a gradient, and the gradient is, uh, let's see, the blue line's going up to 160, the other one goes up to closer to 200, so that's a 40 millimeter gradient. You can see that the blue line it, it peaks a little later than the red line. That's called pulsus tardis. That's because the valve. Um, and the, so, the, so what's going on there is the pigtail in the ve in the ve in the ventricle is the red. <laughs> that's the higher pressure, and the pigtail in the aorta is the blue. And that one it peaks even later, a little later, as you can see, because of the uh, obstructed valve. Okay. So when we're done, we want to see those two line up perfectly. Let's get the where's that that uh, comp the uh, well. So let me just show you this. This is the wire, uh, let's see, camera, yeah, okay. All right, so there's my hand. You see the wire has got a nice bend to it. It looks like a pig's tail. Um, and uh, I'm gonna put that in the ventricle. And you're gonna, are you okay? Way, yeah. Okay. So you, I'm gonna have you take this out. Sure. All right, I'll hold the sheet. Okay. So the wire curls up nice and safely in the ventricle. Oh, okay. that, we don't wanna lose that. <laughs> okay. Good. All right, now we'll take the, uh, we're ready now to uh, do the balloon valvuloplasty, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we decided we're gonna do a balloon. So we yep. got a balloon. We have a 20 balloon. 20 yep. balloon. Comes so they're giving the us the free balloon. The free balloon. It comes with the valve. Uh, it's not my favorite balloon. It's a little short. It should be a little longer, but you know, I, I, I get it that I'd rather have the Edwards engineers working on new valve technology than balloon technology, but it's a little short and it's, um, so, uh, and you have to pace with it. Uh, there are, there's a balloon made now that has a, um, it's called a true yeah. flow that lets, you, you good? That lets, um, that we like better because it lets blood flow through it while the ball is expanded. We don't have to do pacing. But let's see if this goes through. That's the markers that went through very nicely. All right, so we're gonna pace. It's a good, we'll get a good, yeah, so you ready? All right, so I'm gonna blow up the balloon with this little handle here. Pacing are on, the balloon goes up, and then balloon down, stop pacing, and we can store that fluoro, so you can see that the, we'll play that back for you. Pretty easy job, right? Okay, and we're ready to go, ready, and yep. I'm missing one. Dr. Brewster um, confirmed skirts it, it, down. So okay, he's here? good. He's here. He's right behind oh, there. Yep. He's hiding. He's hiding. What is he doing? <laughs> Where is he hiding? He's right be talking to anesthesia. Oh, he's talking to yeah. anesthesia. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They're probably talking about airplanes or something. So let's get the valve. <laughs> good. Okay. So the valve has a, uh, a loader that, uh, so the valve, the first thing the valve has to do, the valve assembly system has to go through the valve of the sheath, right? So we don't want it to get ripped and destroyed, so there's a nice plastic sheath over it. So it is up, right? And I'll put this through the sheath, done. And then I'm gonna pass the good, valve through, and I can tell the access is pretty good here. Because, well, I'm, like, I'm stretching, right now I'm, I'm stretching the uh, sheath with the valve as it passes through and I have to push pretty hard, but I don't have to push that hard. That means that the artery is pretty big. Okay, so we'll take this out. We're going to have to assemble the valve. You guys, you know, right now this valve is, I'm going to leave it on, is, um, has to be assembled by the doctor. Um, so, I mean, I think you should, I, I think I should get some of the, some of the Valve cost, right, of assembly, <laughs> right? Since I'm part of the manufacturing now. Yeah. All right, Ray will show us how we do that now. Ray's going to open that up, and I'm going to keep my eye on him because he's in training here. He's going to pull the pull the balloon part of this assembly. I, just, I thought this was stop. Wire, watch wire, wire, watch wire, wire. 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 Got to have your wire go out first. I thought this was a very ingenious idea to have the wire, the balloon, and and the valve separate. So you back to the so yeah. now you can drop that and just good. Lock. 
Lock all the way locked. Yes. Yep. Okay. Good. Now turn backwards on the on the. Yeah, you got wire. Yeah. There you go. The ring and you see what's happening is he's bringing the balloon into the valve. Stop there. I'm going to just push this up a little bit and get the parallax out. Well, ACC was 80, ATC was what? 234. 234. You want to go maybe a little more happen then. All right. So there we go. A little bit more back. Just yeah. So you see, you guys see that very clearly, right? Good. Now the balloon is centered on the valve. Okay, so now you're going to move that to the middle. Okay, so we're gonna, he's going to put a little bend. Yeah. There's a pull wire inside this delivery system, and he's uh, Ray is turning this dial here to, uh, get, to get get a little yeah. curve, Someone so it curves right. over. And uh, why don't we we magged up pretty quickly? Are we on, are we on zero? Yeah. Okay. All right. So just zero is fine for now. I just like to see the wire as I like to sort of see both, but I guess this hard I can't. So just one of my, I just like to watch it as it goes around, and we put a little back tension on the wire, yeah. so you don't scrape too much stuff into the cerebral back, uh, cerebral vessels. Okay, we're going to cross, and it was a little hard to cross, a little hard, but not too bad. Okay, I'm going to mag it up to two. Now, now we're going to take the. Uh, why don't you do this? Push her back. So I'll hold, hold the, the sheet, sheet for you. Yeah. Keep the valve where it is, and you're with your right hand. Move your left hand to your right hand, and, and you have to break the seal. There you go, right to there. Perfect. Stop right there, and then we tighten it, tighten it back up again. Okay. Yeah, just lock it all the way. Good. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to uh, deploy the valve. I'm going to put my pigtail down, and let's see a little test there to see where we are. Okay. It's actually not bad. Yeah, All right, so bad. we're going to do a test right now before we deploy. Uh, well, we're going to pace. You're set there? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, I'll take this. I like to. All right. So we don't have. No, we'll do it this way. So uh, pacer on. Store, pacer off. Store the fluoro. All right. So that looks like the valve has to go down a little lower, right? Maybe we can use our. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not too much it's though. It's got to go yeah, down. No, so, yeah. so the marker should be on the bottom part of the um, of the pigtail. So it's it is almost there, but I'm going to yeah. push it in a little bit more, right about yeah. there. Nice. I think we can do. She's doing great, this patient. So I think we can do one more test. All right, pacer on. Pacer on. So that makes the heart quiver, and I think yeah. everyone's liking that. Pacer yeah. off, looks and good. I'll store the fluoro. We all like that. Yeah, looks good. So I do this thing also, not everyone does this, but I, I, if, you look, if you look, you can see some calcium pointing at the valve before the dye comes in. And that should be sort of right in the middle of the first marker and the middle marker. Um, and it sort of is. I mean, it gives me some visual clue. I'm gonna wanna, because now I'm gonna take the pig away. I think it dropped down. See that? Okay. Maybe look. Uh, eh, maybe okay. not. Yeah, maybe on not. the beat, I think we just caught it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's gonna come up again during the, uh, during the pacing. Yeah. Let's one more test here. Let me just make sure I'm not screwing it up. So a little bit. It's a little yeah, low. I did drop down it's a little, little bit. Low. Yeah, right. Pull it back up. Get it right back to where we want it. Let's do a. We'll, we'll do a. Let's do a, a, a integrated run. Okay. Okay. If you pick it up, I'm gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna deploy on this one, but I'm gonna inject first, okay. just to be certain. I think sure. it's fine, but okay. All right. So, uh, pacer on. I think it's good. Yeah, Deploy. Good. Keep pacing. 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 Pacer off. Store the fluoro. Well done. done. I'll take nice. all, I'll take the um, I'll take <coughs> the bend off the catheter. If you can just pull this, well, I'll get it out. Of, out. I like there's a couple of things I do right now. I think uh, first yeah. the the yeah. valve is not really coaxial, so I'll change my view to make it coaxial, which I just did. Uh, before I do, I just always like to make, it makes me feel better just to do this for two seconds here, just a little bit of a puff. The, you, the so the valve landed beautifully. And we can, sh yeah, we can show you, this was the deployment. Uh, again, we, de we made sure we were in the right spot. We overdrive paste. And you can see how the valve really um, uh, comes in um, from the bottom. Right, the bottom, the bottom really comes up when it's deployed. Um, as you can see, whoop, yeah, okay. Looks good. All right, that's always a fun moment. Yeah. Okay, we'll take this out. Mm -hmm. And then we'll measure some pressures and then we'll see if there's a, 
if there's a, uh, any, any, any regurgitation. As you know, this valve has a skirt that's really phenomenal um, that tends to uh, block, block paravalvular leak. Mm -hmm. So we do, we're, we're, um, we're doing about seven or eight of these a week now. In fact, we're moving to a, a Jen has organized Taver Tuesdays to have two rooms going, two, two teams, and we'll hope to get seven or eight done, seven or eight done in one day. Yeah. Okay. And then we have to get this one cleared. Did we do that yet? I don't, I don't remember hearing it, so let's, let's clear this one. Okay. Okay, you can flush. So we're going to do that same thing. Remember I said I want the blue line and the red line to overlap, which uh, oh, looks pretty good, right? 23. Yeah. 23. So you see the difference there. Now, the other thing we're looking at is the diastolic pressure, which is 60, and it was 55. So that's probably going to be okay. We yeah. can use the we can do the AR index. Now we pace this patient a lot, so the diastolic pressure is up to 22, 25. So the and let's just see the other one is now 60, Pressure's so that's 35 to yeah. over 180. The index is like 0.2. The index is not so perfect, so we'll see. Yeah, are you, are yeah. Oh, the zeros are off. Yeah, that's why there's that slight gradient there. All right, the Let's, yeah, let's zero both of them. Zero both. See so yeah, how he's right, the zeros are. See, there you go. Now I feel better. Whew. Okay. And now they're spot oh, on, but oh, the, yeah. yeah, the problem now is that the regurgitation is, is more. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, and the heart rate is 56. All right, so, so let's pull this back and see, we may have to post dilate this. Okay. So we'll give a couple of beats to let the valve leaflets get to know each other. Okay, and here we go. Uh, we're on two, let's go on one so we can see it better. Here we go, inject, go. And eh, it's not, eh, I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Clears with one bead and doesn't go to the ventricle. What do you guys think? I mean, you could really do either yeah. one here. What about LVOT, was there a lot of LVOT? She LV had a nice questions? chunk of calcium, so I would, yeah, maybe just leave All right, this. so what we're yeah. going on, what, what's going on here is there's a chunk of calcium in the LVOT, and, mm -hmm. Uh, the Edwards valve, since you, if you post dilate it, you can, um, you can make a hole in the annulus and that is a lethal, usually a lethal occurrence. I mean, at least half the time it's lethal. So there's a risk of that. Uh, and so the question is, is this enough leak? It usually gets better too over time. This is, yeah. I think we're going to decide to leave it, right guys? Yeah. The diastolic okay. pressure is already like, it's 60. Yeah. It's fine. All right. We're going to leave it. Uh, we just don't want any. We don't good. want any disaster or anything. Yeah. So we're done. That, any, any questions? Ray's going to start closing. It's yep. the closer is the closure takes 10, 15 minutes, and it's kind of boring. But um, because he just has to cinch up those mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sorry. those 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 sutures, and you can start doing your thing. Yes, we have one. Hey, I'm Dr. Deerstein. This is Kristen. Just want to say you did a fabulous Kristen, job. Kristen, how are you Kristen's doing? Kristen's there. Uh, Good, how are you? <laughs> all right, all right. We're we're doing great here, and we we've been using a lot of your valves lately. I don't know if you noticed. Um, I've heard, well, I've heard. Mike, Mike says, oh, how can I see you? Can I see you? Oh, I see oh, yeah, you, so you're not seeing me. Yeah. Oh, there I am. I see you. I see me. <laughs> I see you. I have to wear a mask for these procedures. Uh, yeah, I have. Did a great job. Thanks, yeah. Mark. All right, guys. Thanks for yeah. thanks, thanks for being thanks, there. Thanks, guys. We, uh, you guys who are doing, who are working, I'll just say for you guys, I don't know, who, some of you are engineers, some of you may be on the assembly line. This is a transformative therapy like, I, like, like nothing I've ever seen in my career. As cool as I thought coronary stents were, this is like the patient's lives are changed dramatically. Um, they, get t they basically get reset 10 years back, uh, which is just, I've never seen anything like it. And um, so we, this really does... I can go home tonight and tell my wife I saved some lives. You, you know, you can't do that every day as a doctor, but you can do that with this procedure. So you, what you're doing is really phenomenal work and really important to people. I just want to say that. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye.